Hey guys, the way in which I came up with this tier list was probably far too convoluted to explain in this video. This is by no means a perk tier list. I need to remind those watching that this is the start of a series of efficient blood point spending, as well to the best of my opinion. Although it is my opinion, I tried really hard to keep this fair. I won't go too in-depth on each character, or it'll be 40 minutes or more. Uh, but the second video that will follow this shortly uh, will be the perks, more in-depth than what the value is. Uh, there's a lot in this game that are very small things that take time to learn, but the first and foremost that needs to be explained is the blood point system. Whether you're brand new or an old player looking to see if you agree or decide in your next character, this tier list could definitely be beneficial for you. Look through the characters and how they seem in-game, cosmetics, looks-wise, if that matters to you, uh, would be the best start. Decide on who you like looks-wise, because when you start investing in them, you're going to probably be stuck with them for a little bit. Uh, unless it's a licensed killer or survivor, you are able to earn these over time with secondary currency earned from leveling up. Uh, one little minor side note is that it seems that you level up faster in the beginning and then it slows down. Uh, and then once you get to, I can't really know if it's 99 into 100 or 100 itself, but either way, um, you uh, kind of prestige a level, if that makes sense. And then you go back to uh, getting the iridescent shards faster. Um, which is the currency for purchasing characters, some cosmetics, uh, just different things without having to spend real money, you know? Uh, it, obviously, a lot of things are locked behind uh, paywall, but at the same time, there are some pretty awesome things you can do with the year dozen shards that you earn over time. Absolutely try your best to look through videos. I don't have any build videos yet, quite yet at the creation of this video, but will down the line for each character as well as how to use their perks specifically with adding a perk or swapping one. But I digress. This is about the tier list for characters. As a side note, some of my, some of my main characters are really bad for blood points, but I enjoy how they look so I still use them with builds from others. Speaking of builds, at level 30, 35 and 40 uh you learn that character's three perks they start with on that character so that it shows up in all characters which is why it may be worth looking into builds prior for example um every single character will come with three perks uh every killer as well uh but those perks will not transfer over to anybody's blood uh webs is what we call them um which is where you spend the blood points, right? And unfortunately, until you get to 30 and you do the unlockable perk, or 35 if that's the unlockable perk, or 40 even, uh, it won't show up in these other um, blood webs. So you won't be able to play one character, really enjoy their perk, but then not get the teachable perk that shows up for them. And when that happens, let's say you go to another character, you are SOL, to be completely honest. Um, you need to go back to the other character and unlock it. There is one way around this, which is the shrine. Uh, the shrine, I don't really want to get too into. It, it's iridescent shards. You trade them in for perks. Um, depending on how casual, how little you play the game and whatnot, this may be worth it for you. It changes weekly, I believe. Uh, I have not purchased any from it, but that's because I play a disgusting amount. Uh, however, anyways, let's get into the tier list. Alright, so now we're at the tier list. Now this, I've already done once, but I wanted to go through it again. In case I decide to change my mind on anything, but I think that it's pretty solid. Um, when it comes to blood point efficiency, you want to be looking for a character in which has a strong perk or two, which will make him even stronger in the higher tier, um, as well as potentially gimmicky things that fit in some builds 
or some underrated perks might be there. Uh, meta is not uh, a thing um, to me. I um, But we will go through this as to what is the value. Okay. Let's try making this really, really quick because I took a lot of time talking. All right, Dwight. Uh, Dwight Bond. Prove thyself. Both amazing perks. Leader. I don't see the benefit in it over other perks. So he's going A. Because Bond helps new players a lot. It also helps you understand where people are. Prove thyself is not quite as strong I feel like as it used to be. Uh, there's a lot of discordance play. However, it is still very strong perk. Meg. Now, Meg is interesting. Meg, I don't like Meg. If it was a who do you like the most, F. D. However, in this situation, she's an S tier. Now, the reason being is because if you invest into Meg, you are going to get multiple things. You are going to get two perks. You are going to get adrenaline. And you are going to get uh, sprint burst. So Meg being an S tier, you do get two perks um, that are incredibly strong. You get sprint burst and adrenaline. And not only that, but you get quick and quiet. Um, sprint burst, amazingly strong. It will never be something that is awful. It will always have a use. It is an exhaustion perk, and those are so rare, and they are so strong. Um, as for adrenaline, adrenaline makes it so that if you are exhausted from your exhaustion perk, it will wipe it right away. And you will gain basically sprint burst to make it straight to somebody hooked, straight to an exit gate, whatever you want. Quick and quiet is a is kind of a gimmick, but at the same time, even if it's not a gimmick, it can fit into other builds. There is not a single perk on Meg in which I can say is bad. And therefore, because of two strong, incredibly strong perks, along with a perk that's usable. She is S. Claudette. Claudette, to me, B tier. And the reason it's B tier is because self-care is kind of, it's good for beginners. It's bad for late game, in my opinion. It's always going to be good because you never have to go find another teammate. So it's it's an average perk. It's good for beginners, and it's good for later on if you're going to do solo queue. Uh, she has empathy, which allows her to uh, see people from a distance that are injured. Now the problem is that doesn't that's not as strong as Dwight's. Like it's a longer distance, sure, but Dwight just sees people in general, um, and including the injured. Although there's less uh, uh, distance between the two, it's just that's just how it is. It, she, he, she cannot make it up to A. Um, she has another perk in which allows her to heal better. Like she's kind of like a medic. Um, her strength comes heavily into like camouflage, I would say. Uh, overall, she's a worthy investment. Because of the self care um, and uh, botany knowledge and whatnot. Like, she's not bad. She's not great. Jake. Now, Jake also, B tier. Jake has Saboteur. I do not believe Saboteur is at all strong. I, uh, I think it's all right. Um, but you are sacrificing a perk slot for it. And that's never good. Uh, Jake, all, Jake also has Calm Spirit. Uh, for a while, there was a doctor meta, which uh, shocks people, and he wouldn't yell. That was, that was incredibly strong. 
Um, and that kind of made him made calm spirit a little bit more common. Uh, you don't see it as much anymore. Sometimes you do, and it'll catch you off guard. So it's kind of like a gimmick. Same with Saboteur. He's kind of a gimmicky character. Um, let me look up what his other perk is, because it's hard when I don't play these characters. Uh, Jake Park perks. I'm trying to remember, because he should be C if it's just gimmicks. Iron Will. That's what it was. Sorry. Uh, so he has Iron Will. I, because he has two perks that I think are just gimmicky and not great, um, the fact that Iron Will is there bumps it up to B. It doesn't bring it to A. It's a B, though. It's a solid choice. You want Iron Will. Iron Will makes it so that when you're injured, you make no sounds. It allows you to do plays like, oh, your, pers your uh, friend just got hooked, and you can just stay right there. Um, and it, even if you're injured, the killer won't hear you unless they have Strider. Um, Iron Will, amazing perk. Uh, so investing in Jake, I would say would be like a, like a B. I, I even would say kind of Claudette might be a C. Um, if I were to choose like a B, C, maybe that, uh, but you know, that's just how it is. Okay. Nia, Nia actually, I, also believe is B. Now, the thing is... I want to make... I always want to make sure. So, Nia DVD perks. So, Nia, she has balance landing, urban evasion, streetwise. So, I put her to B because of exhaustion. Balance landing is not the greatest, but it's not bad, and it will catch killers off guard imagine being on top of a hill with like a hook or something you unhook somebody let's say they dropped off the hill and ran and now the killer is standing there waiting for you to drop down because he knows you have to eventually right otherwise he's just gonna waste time and push um balance landing will catch him off guard same with jumping off of a church or vaulting a window up above as soon as you hit that ground you are going to recover from it faster and you're gonna get a sprint burst it's one of those you need environment to really pull it off, but it is a great perk. It's exhaustion. Um, but her other two perks kind of hold her back. Uh, urban evasion is okay. Um, urban evasion, I would say, is a B tier perk. I don't think it's an S tier. Um, I think that it kind of promotes poor play uh i i think that there is an element of stealth but the game hasn't turned into like a stealthy game i think it kind of just makes everybody bored and overall why do urban evasion when you can do something else uh, i feel like it's kind of a beginner friendly perk so that you kind of can stay safe you know kind of go around but like once you're once you're uh once you're more of a veteran i don't think you're gonna be using it and if you are then i mean so be it you like it she's a tier b for me uh next up is lori now this one's gonna be weird because a lot of a lot of people um that i've asked have completely uh disagreed with me um Lori to me is a B tier. So let me make sure I know her other perks because I want to make sure I don't get any information wrong. Um, so Lori Strode is, uh, you can't buy her from Iridescent. You have to buy her with Myers from a DLC. So that's already something to keep in mind. Um, but that's not what's going to really make or break, right? Um, her perks are Soul Survivor, Object of Obsession, and Dec Decisive Strike. Here's the thing. Object of Obsession is a 50-50 chance of it being good or bad, and it also requires the killer. Uh, I don't want to do any... I, I'm trying to value perks that require the killer 
to enable them, uh, such as Decisive Strike, for example. She was close to A because of Decisive Strike. There's a lot of talk back and forth. I would say that if the Decisive Strike nerfs don't go through, she, she might be an A. She might be an A, because, but you do have to get her to level 40 for Decisive. Object of Obsession, absolutely not great. Um, and, well, I mean, no, sorry. Object of Obsession is fine, but it's more for team-oriented situations, and you only have one person running it usually, and I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem strong unless you go into competitive play. I don't think it's good in any way otherwise. Well, Survivor, you don't want everyone to die. So, really, all she has is Decisive Strike going for her, and we're looking at a potential nerf for that. Next up, Ace, one of my favorite characters in the game. F. So, let's go to Ace DBD perks, and I'll explain to you why. So, Ace is a character that's all about gambling. And, uh, so his perks, uh, it, it increases aura reading ranges for, like, items by not that much. Uh, it does give it to your team as well, but it, it's not good. It, it's just not good. Uh, next one for each survivor other than yourself, uh, gain a stack of a 1, 2, 3% luck. Bonus awarded to all survivors up to 9%. Luck in this game is not is nothing. You don't want to be building around luck. Um, Ace in the hole is his uh, gimmick perk. I would say where you have a chance, you always have a 100% chance of an add-on um, with chest items. And they can be very rare. Um, like really rare. Uh, and, and it can come with two per, it can come with two add-ons, you know? So that's really strong. Um, but it's not strong enough to take over another slot. The gimmick build with that would be going for item farming. And if you go for item farming, it's gonna harm you in the end. I've tried it a lot. It works. Like, you'll escape with some cool items, but then, like, the add-ons that are on the items because they changed it, they go away. So really you're just getting an item out of it. So this took a huge hit and is now an F tier unit. Bill. I don't like Bill. But he's an A tier. Now let's look at Bill's perks really quick. I don't want to get too into them because I'm going to do more in depth on each character. Um... Bill, perk, DVD. Okay. So, Bill, if you are, I believe, PlayStation, you get his perks in the blood web no matter what. Sorry, just how it is. Xbox, Microsoft, you gotta work on them. Uh, you know, that sucks, but whatever. Bill's from Left 4 Dead, in case you didn't know. Uh, so it's a crossover with that. Okay. So he's got a perk that allows him to see the hatch if he's the last one around. Uh, not good. Never good. Uh, I mean, it can come in handy, sure, but, like, you are assuming not only you are going to, like, be alive still at the point of hatch, but you are also assuming that the killer hasn't seen hatch already. And... To go to hatch, you either need a key or to be the last one alive. There's too many variables. However, this is where it comes in heavy and where partially part of me wants to put him in S. I really, really, you know what? I'm putting him to S. Borrowed time should be on everybody's build. Whether you are solo queue, whether you are uh, survive with friends, Borrowed time allows you to unhook somebody and make it so they can't just get slugged immediately. Borrowed time is one of the strongest, if not the strongest perk in the game. Uh, as for Unbreakable is his other perk, um, you are able to recover from the dying state. And not only that, but it increases the speed of recovering. 
uh, Unbreakable can completely change a game like that. But unfortunately, it does require the killer to knock you down. So that's why I kept him in A. However, I feel like it's such a strong perk that fits in so many builds to have as like that extra plus one that uh, I made a mistake originally. He's definitely S tier um, for like investment. You should definitely invest in him um, if you haven't already. Uh, next, Fang Min. Okay, so Fang Min is a B tier. I'm trying to think here. Fang Min is a B tier. Um, she comes with interesting things. Uh, so Fang Min DVD perks. So Fang Min. She's pretty cool. I like her a lot. She came with um the doctor, I believe. Um let me see. Thanks, Perks. So she might be a C tier. I don't know. I, I don't wanna give anybody that has an exhaustion perk a, anything lower than a B. I just don't feel like it's correct because there's not enough exhaustion perks and it fits in every build. The problem is that alert, it's all right. It'll show you, it'll, uh, one of her perks, I mean, sorry, is alert and it will tell you exactly what you need to uh, know as to where the killer is. If he's kicking a gen, breaking a pallet, uh, breaking a breakable wall, I assume. Uh, anything that he's breaking or damaging or kicking, you can see for five seconds or ten, so, whatever. Um, life, when you jump a window, you gain 150% of your normal running speed for maximum three seconds. I personally don't like life. I feel like because of latency and DBD, uh, I tend to get hit and life. And... I'm not completely sure if they stack. I think they do, but it's not something, it's not an exhaustion perk that necessarily can save you in close quarters like some of the others. Um, because there is a delay getting through windows even with life. Uh, lastly, technician, that's a gim that's not even a gimmick perk. Just ignore it. It, it does, it basically says if you fail a skill check, it has a chance, a chance to not make an explosion. No, oh, wait, wait, wait. Did they change it? Okay. So when you fail a skill check on a generator, it'll make it so the generator explosion will be prevented. The generator loses repair progress as usual. Because if you miss skill checks, it will lose it. Um, and it will also regress more. So it's not too bad. But why would you take that over other things, right? Like, just don't miss the skill check. And it's all of a sudden no longer useful. So technician's bad. Alert gets trumped by other vision perks and life isn't the greatest exhaustion so i don't feel comfortable putting her above uh b uh i actually would feel more comfortable putting her to c um david oh oh david now this one is one of those ones where i feel like this might be coming from Okay, so David is going to be going to S tier, and there's a reason. He's actually S tier, and he's in first place. Uh, no Mither is level 40. No Mither is useless. So you only need to get David to 35 to begin with. And with this, you are going to most like, I, I, it, it's definitely top two to three, probably top perk uh exhaustion perk in the game which is dead hard to let you uh kind of tackle um it, you can't tackle the killer but you can kind of like uh dash that's what i should say you dash to 
a forward a little bit and you get an you get an invisibility or invincibility frame right so you can dodge hits you can get to uh pallets you can do like if you're out of position maybe you can save a few more seconds there's just so much you can do with it you can uh turn around and dead hard into the killer and he gets confused or th there's a lot you can do with him however he's s tier because this is a guide on blood point efficiency and at level 30 he gains we're gonna live forever this perk if you take a protection hit you gain one stack if you get a safe on hook you get one stack now this is not hard to get up it, it uh goes to four stacks total so that's all you need to do for the game and it will add uh 100 bonus blood points now that's not that might not seem like it, it goes over past the maximum amount is what i'm trying to say so this will allow you to just gather more and more and more blood points uh and you want to get him early uh quinton uh i love you quinton uh f tier um i'm sorry i don't even want to get into his perks because it's so depressing um he, he doesn't offer anything he he offers literally nothing at least ace has like um a gimmick perk uh quinton doesn't even have a gimmick perk i don't know what they did with him he's just awful uh detective tap detective tap we are actually going to be putting hmm, we're gonna be putting him into b as well i know there's a lot of b's um because overall the survivors are rather balanced when i was going through this and i was uh doing the calculations and stuff like that on my end i found out that a lot of them equaled very similar amounts of points that i was using um but either way detective tap let's see detective app duty um because i don't want to actually forget something i apologize tenacity okay amazing perk uh tenacity allows you to move 50 percent faster on the ground imagine putting tenacity with bill's perk of unbreakable bam you the killer will lose sight of you if he slugs you at all and while you're crawling you are able to recover and you'll be recovering faster because of the unbreakable granted i can't add the unbreakable to this because this is just about tap so tenacity 50 percent faster and you can recover at the same time this is still an amazing perk without being able to pick yourself up you are able to go from a corner so far away if you get slugged or anything else that the killer will lose you it, i am probably a killer main and i can tell you how many times i've lost that lost people because of tenacity and unbreakable um just because i wasn't paying attention and it's one of those things you know uh detectives hunt she comes with uh basically auras of generators chess etc etc are um they're revealed to you now this might not seem like a big deal at first until you start thinking about the fact that chess can come in handy and totems definitely come in handy now let's say they have ruin you guys are struggling um and you can't find the totem bam totem is gonna be highlighted uh last one is stakeout again a great perk but not amazing uh every perk here that he has is pretty middle of the middle of the uh just in the middle you know um but basically you stay near the killer and um you gain tokens and those tokens turn good skill checks into great skill checks while you're doing generators um great skill checks uh i think turn into two percent with this if you land it but the thing is I, that's confidence do you feel confident oh i'm stupid never mind i take that back um and i'm not going to edit that out 
Um, but uh, good skill checks turn into great skill checks, and they will consume a token. And then you need to get near the, the killer again to get that. Um, and each of these tokens will grant an additional progression of 1%. Even with that um, correction, uh, it's still middle of the of the. It's still middle of the line. It's not special. Okay, uh, twenty three minutes. I I need to rush this because the beginning was already done. That was like five minutes, so uh, we're getting there. And I don't want this to go too long, so we're gonna start going faster and faster and faster. Okay, Kate, uh, Kate Denson, you are going to be going to B as well. Okay, Kate. Kate is such a gimmicky character. I don't... Kate Denson DVD. Um, so Kate comes with Dance With Me, which is when you fast fall, leaving a locker. Uh, you won't leave scratch marks um, for three seconds, which is good. It can trick people. And also... It can trick people with other locker skills and other things like that. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Windows of Opportunity is what keeps her at B for me. I think Windows of Opportunity is one of the most, if not the most, underrated perk in this game. People say, oh, you don't need to know where the windows are. You don't need to know where the pallets are. No, that's not what the point of Windows of Opportunity is. It's to know where dead zones are. When you're running, do you know that there's a, per that there's a pallet over there? No, find a different way. Don't go around that rock. It saves you time, kind of a thing. It is amazing, and if it, you see a pallet on the side, like, dropped and not broken, you know that you can go there later to try to maybe loop a little bit, but it's great. Uh, boil over, I don't really want to get too into. Basically, it just kind of obscures hooks, and it doesn't really usually work. I try making it work. It, it it's just it's so rare to make work that it's not worth it. Um, so the blood point efficiency in her is just not there unless you really really want Windows of Opportunity, which I would recommend. Um, I would borderline put her to A just because of Windows of Opportunity. That's how much I love it. Uh, Adam, uh, Adam, I am going to be putting into A. Um, now Adam. It's kind of kind of different. Um he mm, So Adam, he has diversion, which is not good. Okay. Uh I'm sorry, you can do gimmicky plays. I know. They can be fun. You throw you throw a pebble, the killer goes over there. They you throw a pebble a couple of times, they're done. Um, but he has deliverance. And I would say Deliverance is, although it requires um, you to save the first, you save somebody before you get hooked, if you're the type that is more, mm, I don't want to say immersed, but if you're immersed, it works. And if you are aggressive with borrowed time, it also works. Um... So it's not awful, it's just sometimes you will get hooked first and then the perk becomes useless because it allows you to, on your first hook, take yourself off of that hook. You will become broken afterwards, and that is very unfortunate. But because Diversion is also a gimmicky build, it's not going to drag it down too much. Autodidact also comes from him. Um, in the beginning, it is very, very weak, and trust me, if there are going to be games where it just doesn't do anything however if you can get the stacks on it this perk is amazing it, it, it's insane it, it really is the amount of healing you can get on that is just absolutely insane unfortunately you get a penalty to healing in the beginning uh now that i'm thinking about it a little bit more and more uh blood point efficiency wise i actually think he might be a c I put him as an A before because of Deliverance being kind of meta. But he has two gimmick perks, and Deliverance requires somebody else. So either A, he's somewhere in A to C. Um, I'm going to keep him in C. 
But if you want to say B or A, that's perfectly fine. I don't think he's a D or an F. Next one, Jeff Johansson, F. Don't invest in him. I'm just kidding. He's a D. Uh, so Jeff, um, I don't like him because of how loud he is and how large he is. On it makes it very hard to travel around and hide. It makes it. If you don't have iron will, you're just the most loud thing ever. If you start running a little bit, your guy is huffing for the rest of everything. Um, but nonetheless, he does come with distortion, and that is not a worthless perk. Um, everything else is bad that he comes with, but because that's not a bad perk, I don't feel comfortable putting him in F. Um, his other perks aren't even worth mentioning, really. Basically, if he gets unhooked, he breaks the hook, so it's another, uh, it's another explosion that gives the killer an extra. Like, oh wait, yeah, that's somebody unhooked. Aftercare is a worse empathy uh, or bond, um, because you have to heal the other person, and if you get hooked or whatever, you lose that ability to see them. Uh, and distortion, on the other hand. Uh, whenever the killer reads your aura, distortion activates and a token is consumed. The next uh, 10 seconds while distortion is activated, your aura will not be shown to the killer and you will not leave any scratch marks. So this can be incredibly strong. Barbecue and chili? What is that? Hmm? What is that? This counters barbecue and chili, one of the largest and most used killer perks. Unfortunately, do you want to run this in your build? It is kind of gimmicky. You can hide in lockers to counter it as well. It's not the greatest. Uh, so D. Jane. Not the greatest fan of Jane. However, she's an A. Um, so Jane, she has an exhaustion perk, which is really good. Uh, she can go into a locker, and when, after three seconds, she can jump out of it. It'll stun the killer for, I think, three seconds. And every second in this game counts. So let's say the killer's looking for you for a while, and then he starts getting closer to the locker finally. And then you don't know if he's going to check your locker or the locker next to you. You might want to save it just for like a half a second, just to try to get a read on it, and then immediately just stun him and run. You will not only annoy him, and make him tilted, potentially. But you also get that extra time you gave your team. And every again, every second counts, and that is time that your team could be doing gens. And that small amount, believe it or not, could be the decision of if a gen gets done or not. Um, so Jane stays up there. She's she's very good. Um, just from the exhaustion alone. Uh, I can't use the exhaustion very well, but I've seen other people use it very, very well. So I can I can definitely attest to the fact that it's an A tier perk. Um, solidarity is also a gimmicky perk from her, but I feel like it's underrated. It just I feel like you might need a team to kind of make it work. Basically, um, solidarity makes it so that when you're healing. A teammate like let's say everybody gets together and they're all healing um you <laughs> let's say there's three of you uh if you are to go to heal one of them with the other person let's say all of that like part of it goes to you let's say you heal the other person part of it goes to you they get to you you're already almost healed you saved a lot of time during that that is kind of gimmicky, but at the same time, I feel like it's something that could be really useful at times, especially in solo queue. Uh, competitive, obviously not, but this isn't about competitive. This is about efficiency. And head-on is, is better than life, in my opinion. Um, it's better than decisive strike. I think decisive strike uh, requires way too much to actually be something. And also the nerf's coming. Um, okay, next. Uh, Ash. So, not a fan of Ash. Ash is also a D, so I'm pretty happy about that. No offense uh, for all those Ash fans out there. Um, but anyways, Ash, DBD, perks. 
So I put him in D tier because he has flip flop, buckle up, and metal a man. Metal a man, if it if it's the same way as it used to be way back in the day, um, he would be A to S tier. Uh, there's no doubt about it, actually. Um, unfortunately, now it's only during protection hits that you gain totems, the uh, the, the tokens, and uh, when you are gain when. <sighs> You have to take protection hits, and you need to take three of them before the last one will give you the endurance status effect. We are at a point now where if you want the endurance status effect, you you just bring a med kit. You just bring a med kit with a uh, purple, um, not this. It's not the pink syringe. It's the other one. But there's a med kit that gives you the borrowed time effect, and. That's literally his perk without any sort of like um prerequisites. Buckle up, lacks potential in one's aura reading ability. Uh when you heal a survivor from dying state to injured, both the healed survivor and yourself see the killer's aura for a duration of six seconds. Not great. Um there are many times where you know where the killer is as you're getting somebody up. Uh, most of the time when you're getting somebody up, it's because the killer saw somebody else and is chasing them right close by. Uh, it's just not good. Uh, it's definitely a crutch perk. Flip flop though. Uh, makes him a D. Makes him a D tier. Uh, while in the dying state, uh, half of your recovery progression is converted into wiggle progression. So this can work with a lot of different things. It's a it's kind of a gimmicky build, but at the same time, it's or gimmicky perk, but at the same time, it's not, you know? Um, it can fit with other characters, and therefore, I'm not going to put him to F. I'm going to put him to D. If you want to put him to C, you can do that as well. Um, I just don't personally see the blood point value in investing in him. And it's a shame. Uh, he's still level 40, and most of my characters are 50 or prestige 3. So it's pretty, uh, that's lame. This next one is going to be something that surpri probably surprises somebody. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it's Nancy. A tier. Nancy, in my opinion, is one of the best characters that they came out with in this game. Not only is she small and able to hide, she's not that loud. None of that matters, though. We're talking about blood point efficiency. I just want to point that out there. Um, when you invest in Nancy, you basically get a better urban evasion. I don't. People can say what they want, um, but the truth of the matter is that you get a better urban evasion. Um, it works amazing with perks like Sprint Burst, where you get that 20% um, movement speed while walking uh, from fixated uh it will also not only do that but it will show you your scratch marks behind you that you're leaving so for uh newer players and old and veterans um you can take advantage of both there have been so many times where if i was crouching even with urban evasion i wouldn't have been able to hide from a killer but walking around like a loop doesn't it always catches them off guard because of that extra speed um and you can choose any exhaustion or not with it um her other perk is in her strength off the top of my head uh you cleanse a totem you get into a locker for like i don't know eight or ten seconds and you're fully healed uh that's a free heal that you don't need to get from anybody else and i i'm pretty sure it's faster than a med kit um you just need to find the totem first but you're gonna find them throughout the map you just need to find a totem and that's literally it uh at any point you can get into a locker from then on um the last perk she has i don't remember using actually and i think it's two people back to back as a picture but i'm trying give me one moment i want to make sure i have this right um okay that is the website that I was looking 
uh, professional, by the way. Uh, better together, yes. Okay, so you seek justice and uncover the truth no matter what obstacle stands in your way. Uh, so while repairing a generator, everybody can see that generator within a, a terror radius, basically, as yellow. So people know that you're there. Um, it's kind of, it kind of comes off like a discordance yellow or um, what is a penance from Pyramid Head? I can't quite remember um, what the name of it was. But uh, if the killer downs a survivor while you're repairing a generator, you see the auras of all other survivors for up to 10 seconds. Um, it's not a bad perk. She does not have any bad perks. Um, fixated to me is one of the strongest perks in the game. It allows you to see your scratch marks so that you can learn how much the killer can actually see. But also, if you don't need to see the scratch marks, it just gives you 20% faster walk speed so you don't have to run around all the place. And it doesn't make you seem like you're, uh, you're crippled. Um, it actually feels natural. Uh, and inner strength is just, that's just great. That's, that's just great. Okay, next, Steve. Um, Steve, I also am going to be putting into C tier, uh, with Adam. Uh, so I want to put him up high. Let me think about this. No, I'm going to keep him messy. And there, there's a good reason for all of I'll uh, cover it really quick. Um, gosh, this is going to turn into a 50 minute video. I didn't want to make it this long. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'll have a little pasted note of like where to go towards the end. Of um, but nonetheless, uh, Steve DVD. I love using one of his perks. I use it a lot in my builds, but just because I do, I need to not be biased about it. So right now I am going to look at his perks. Uh, babysitter, uh, he, so when you invest in him, uh, at 30, you're going to be getting babysitter, which makes it so that you and the killer see each other after you unhook somebody. And um, the survivor that you unhooked won't leave scratch marks or pools of blood. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, the killer's not. If the killer's not camping, he's gonna be. Um, he's not gonna be able to rush back and find the person in time. Um, if the if the killer's close by, he's just gonna turn around and get him. So it's an okay perk. Now the next two perks: camaraderie and second wind. Actually, I'm putting it. Um, camaraderie is more of a, I would say, competitive type of perk. Um, basically, when you get close to a survivor that's in the wiggle stage, you can save them um, another 30 seconds, which 30 seconds is astronomically huge, allowing them to wiggle. You can let them die, but that's an extra 30 seconds. Do you know how much you can do with that? There's so much. Like, you need to stay near them. You do need to see near, stay near them, so there's only going to be two teammates that are doing things. But let's say you're on comms, all right? Two people are doing gens. They're almost done with their gen. They go to another one. It's now at, like, 50%, 60% before the other person dies. Or you run Steve with borrowed time. You run down there at the last second. You save them, and maybe uh, you don't lose anything except gens are going. Um, second win is the perk that I use the most. Uh, and it's uh, basically if you heal somebody from uh, 0 to 100 or just overall, like, it'll carry over. Uh, like, if you do 25% healing on one character and then 30 on another, you'll have 45% of it all the way. You just need to do one health state fully. And then after you're unhooked, you'll be broken status, but not for long. It's a very short broken status. And it skips needing to be it skips needing to be healed. Uh, it heals you, and uh, that's all there is to it. it. It literally just heals you. It's a second wind, and um, that's amazing. Not having to stop at a hook to heal, or let's say you're in the end. It, it, there's just so many things that you could probably come up with. He's an amazing person to invest in. Um, 
Next one, Yui. Yui. Yui was my first uh, P3. I P3'd her immediately, so this is putting her in D sucks. Um, so let me go, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll quickly do a rundown of her perks, nothing major. Um, basically, Lucky Break, uh, while Lucky Break is active, you will not leave any pools of blood for a total of 180 seconds, except as soon as that activates, bam, gone. Your perk's gone. And it activates uh, after you're unhooked, if I remember. Oh, no, it activates when you're injured. So it's not even that good either. Um, because let's say you get hit by the killer, just an M1. You're not going to leave pools of blood. But he's chasing you. And what about your scratch mark? So it's just not a good, it's just not a good perk. Uh, any means necessary is what brings her to D tier. Um, along with Breakout. Um, neither of them are great, but at the same time, they're gimmicky and they can be kind of fun to play with. Uh, any means necessary, you can lift a pallet back up. Kind of, kind of fun. Um, if they don't break the pallets, you can kind of, like, reset areas. Uh, it has a cooldown, but, like, you can reset one of the pallets and then go back later. And, uh, Breakout is just, you give them the haste effect while, uh, you're near a survivor that's being carried and they get extra wiggle and uh, you gain extra move speed so you can kind of dodge them a little bit easier and don't hit. Um, the thing is, solo queue, it's not good. Um, and if you're making a team, I don't feel like you really need to uh, invest in either of these. So she's a D tier because of gimmicky. Uh, next perk, Zarina, uh, F tier. Um, she's also one of my mains. So Zarina, DVD. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of cool abilities she has, but um, they're just not good. So uh, for the people, I do not understand why people take this perk in. Basically, you instantly heal people from dying to injured um, or... Can you heal them to full? No. Okay. I don't think so. If you can, it still doesn't change much. But basically, um, you can sacrifice your full health to pick somebody up from dying state immediately at the cost of you bro becoming broken uh, for a minute and a half. And with being broken... It's, um, you can't heal. And you're going to be moaning, you're going to make noise and everything else. And if you pick somebody up from dying, then the killer knows where that was. And if it's that fast, they're going to know what's going on. They're going to see that you're broken. And they're just going to swap targets. Or you're just stuck for a minute and a half hearing yourself whining. And that person just gets downed again anyways. It's just, it's one of those perks that are so gimmicky that... I don't see it come into play as well. Red Herring is just doing a generator for three seconds and then jump in a locker. It'll make it explode. When do you ever want to get off a lot, get off a generator? I don't know. You don't. Off the record is, um, it's a worse iron wheel. If you're unhooked, it activates for a minute, a little over a minute. And, uh, Aura can't be seen, and grunts of pain caused by injuries are reduced by 100%. Uh, Iron Will throughout the entire game will give you um, 100%. So she's F tier because there's better... There's just nothing there. there like For the people, you can argue she that can put her to D tier, but if anything, I would put it between D and F. Um, Cheryl. I like Cheryl. She's a C tier. I do not think that she deserves higher. I do not believe she deserves lower. And uh, the reason being is a couple things. Girl, um, so, Cheryl. Uh, her perks are Soul Guard, Blood Pact, and Repressed Alliance. 
Um, Soul Guard uh, allows you to continuously pick yourself up if there's a hex. This is one of those perks, again, that require the killer to do something. They need to have a certain build in which affects you. And if the, if the hex gets cleansed, it no longer is anything. Um, the good thing about it, though, is that if you soul guard, you do get the borrowed time. So it's not a gimmick perk so much. Um, blood pact is when you are the obsession. When you or the obsession are injured, you both see each other's aura. Uh, the haste effect. I don't care about haste effect. I don't want to stay with my teammates so much. Uh, nothing really comes of it too well. And that's something that you don't want to always constantly be with them unless that's your type of play style. Um, but nonetheless, 7% haste just doesn't sound good. Maybe I don't know what haste fully... Uh, maybe I don't fully... Maybe I'm missing something. But uh, yeah, Blood Pact I think is bad. Repressed Alliance I also think is kind of bad. Um, Repressed Alliance reminds me a lot of Dead Man's Hook, except it's a controlled Dead Man's Hook on Survivor's side. Dead Man's Hook is one of the worst perks for a killer. Um, is it Dead Man's Hook? Dead Man's Switch? Whatever one is, if they let go of it, that's the one that I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, anyways. Uh, next up, Felix. Felix is my babe, and guess where he goes? F tier. Felix, Felix, Felix. On f what did they do to you? <sighs> okay. Visionary is his first perk. I'm not going in depth because the next video will go in depth on each sing each character individually or maybe two at a time, uh, depending on how long. But uh, I apologize already for how long this video is. I'll have time stamps. Uh, but that being said, um, visionary is a perk that allows them to see generators within a cert within terror radius base within like a terror radius distance is what I should say. And when a generator is completed, visionary is disabled for 16 seconds. Um, this could be a perk that's good for brand new players, but the problem is you don't want to get this. Per you don't want to invest in Felix as a new player, and as an old player, you kind of understand where the gens should spawn because they never spawn next to each other. They kind of spawn like in certain sections. Um, every once in a while you'll get two that are close to each other, but for the most part, they, you can kind of guesstimate where the gens are. And there's three gens at the end anyway, so gen visionary is just not great. Uh, Desperate Measures uh, increases healing and unhooking speeds for each injured, hooked, or dying survivor. It's literally completely useless. 10% if nobody's injured or dying or hooked. Uh, Increased healing and unhooking speed. Why do that without build to last or um, anything else? Like, there's just so many things. Just use a med kit, hide behind a wall. 10% is doing literally nothing for you. Uh, built to last is probably his strongest perk, which uh, once per trial, when an item is depleted, you will refill 50% of its charges after 10 seconds. Uh, if you do go that route at some point, remind, remember that, um, you want as many charges as possible on whatever item it is so that you gain as much po as possible from built to last. But I don't think built to last is actually something that's worth having in your kit. Uh, it's, it's quirky. It's, uh, interesting, but I don't know in what scenario it's definitely necessary. So in that because of these perks being kind of lackluster, he's off. Uh, I can't do D unless you're just a brand new player, but even then you should be you should be focusing on David, Meg, Bill, down the line, just whoever you want. But be sure to choose a character in which you know you want to play. Do you can invest in them if you want, if they have good perks, but I would 
strongly advise choosing a character you like to play and try to limit the amount of other characters in which you want to invest in your blood points um, to make a build. And then just stay with that build and work on blood points while using a character that you enjoy. Blood points are going to take forever. I play this game so much and I am so, I need so much blood points. <laughs> it's insane. Um, so be ready for that grind. I am a per, I, uh, I'm a completionist. So, uh, if I really wanted to, I could have had everybody already maxed out. Um, the reason I'm not talking about Elodie or the other one is because I don't have enough experience on and I don't want to lie. Um, Elodie seems like she's okay, and the other one, I actually don't even know what the perks are because I refuse to, like, uh, really get involved with that until she's released live. But this per this tier list is pretty much kind of how I would like it to be, honestly. Like, there's a few things that could probably be changed, but overall, like, blood point efficiency-wise, this is... This would be what I would say is definitely the most important order, Elder. But, like... And honestly, Jane might go down because she really only has head on. And head on might be weaker than decisive, but it, it, it's so hard to say. Um, but nonetheless, I, I'm so sorry for me for this video being so long. I will have a timestamp directly to the tier list in case you just want to hear that. Do that. Uh, but either way, thank you very much. Um, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, uh, so if you disagree on any of this, leave a comment below and that way, uh, I can read it for sure. I definitely will. No, I'll respond to everything. Um, I, I know for a fact that this list isn't perfect, but it's the best that I can come up with as to blood point efficacy is that the word efficacy efficiency efficacy whatever anyways uh legion doesn't need to speak so anyway uh, you know what have a great day from uh from legion to you um yeah well no this is awkward you're supposed to be uh you should have left you're still here Okay. I'm just going to take my leave. Bye.